church today. I'm tired. Uh, people at that church don't like me. And the sermons are always boring. Uh, his wife pushed him on out the bed anyway and said, uh, honey, now uh, you have to go to church. First of all, we always worship on Sunday, no matter how we feel. Second, it doesn't matter whether the people like you at the church or not. And third, you're the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me this morning, but there have been some mornings like that. And we're continuing this morning in our 21-day spiritual awakening series that uh, we have entitled, and uh, is there in the uh, sermon notes outline in your bulletin, when life caves in, what then? In our sub-thought during these three weeks of drawing near to God is intimacy with God in times of adversity. And my friends, if there was ever a pastor who woke up one Sabbath morning and didn't want to go to the very temple where he was the pastor, it was the prophet Isaiah here in this text. For as we shared with you on last week, for here in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah himself and the nation indirectly was devastated and grieving over the death of Isaiah's and the nation's fallen leader, Isaiah's close friend, and possibly Isaiah's first cousin, King Isaiah. You see, prophets in those days were the equivalent of the nation's pastors. Kings were the equivalent of the nation's president or the uh, chief political and governmental ruler. And so kings in that day occupied the palace and the White House. Yeah. Prophets occupied and ministered in the temple or the church house. And so when the king, Uzziah, was tragically put off the throne in the White House, it left Isaiah and the nation not feeling like going to worship service at the church house. As I said, Uzziah was not only the king, Uzziah was Isaiah's friend. Isaiah, Isaiah was Isaiah's possibly first cousin. And uh, overall, it was a time of discouragement, depression, and turmoil, in addition to a time of hurt and grief in Isaiah's life. But my friends, to Isaiah's credit, guess what he did? He allowed his grief, he allowed his pain, he allowed that his world had been turned upside down, he allowed the fact that it seemed like he didn't know what in the world was going on to draw him to God yeah. rather than drive him from God. He allowed uh, uh, the very pain in his heart and mind. And let me remind you this morning, let me say this, just in case as you are walking through losses in your life, I speak not only to those of you and those of us who have lost loved ones, but don't you know grieving, we grieve any time we lose anything. When we lose our health, when we lose our job, when we lose our friends, when we lose our dreams in life, when we lose uh, our status in life, when, we, when our car breaks down, when our house catch on fire, don't you know God created you and created me to be able to grieve when we lose that which is near and dear to our lives. 
And so if you don't feel happy in light of the losses you're experiencing, guess what? That's all right as far as God is concerned. Uh, you don't, you know, and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not off track here, but uh, let me, uh, you know, this has been in my spirit for some time. I want to caution us how we counsel grieving people sometime because there is this tendency we mean well is, uh, 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 and you know, I, I've been a part of more than a, a funerals than, than, than I recall in a short period of time, including my own family. And there's this tendency, uh, and again, my goodness gracious, we mean well, but, but we say, uh, I've been thinking about it, and I'm a minister who's done it somewhat, but I'm, I'm going to start curving it. In other words, uh, this, uh, well, this is a homegoing celebration, and it is, and we kind of make it sound like everybody ought to be happy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, see, you're missing that. And, 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 and we just have to watch this. We mean well. And, and, but we have to remember that, that, that uh, uh, and I'm just going to say this. I'll, I'll get back on track. I told First Lady now, when I die, I do want y'all to celebrate, okay? But don't celebrate so much as y'all as if y'all glad I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? There, there, there seems to be this, 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 everybody has to be happy. My friends, uh, uh, when there's been losses in my life, in our lives, it's okay to be down in the dump. It's okay to not feel like being happy. But the purpose of this series and what God uh, brought to my heart and mind is that when we see God, guess what? In the midst of losses, guess what? That's the best time to seek the Lord. And so Isaiah went on to the church house. And as we looked at it, he discovered that even though the throne was empty on earth, yeah. uh -huh. and they couldn't find Isaiah no more. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah yeah. was drawn near to God. Yeah. God revealed himself in a very special way and during this season, whether you are going through grieving or loss or not, I trust this season, whether it's been a seven day, 14 day, 21 day, or no matter how many days, this season is about drawing closer to God. Yeah. And so we've already come to grips with when life caves in, look up, look, 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 look up, look up. But guess what happened? God manifested himself in a very special way. And God, and in the midst of this awesome, manifest, overwhelming time, when Isaiah says, I saw the Lord like, now look again. Isaiah had been going to church all his life, just like me and you. But there was something about this time. Hallelujah. He saw God like he never saw God before. But also, guess what? Isaiah learned that he had another problem. Mm, 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 mm. And that's, and guess what this? Isaiah's problem was not only his broken heart. I said in the midst of this drawing close to God, yeah. Isaiah discovered he not only had a broken heart, yeah. mm. but Isaiah discovered something else. All right, good job. That he also had a sinful heart. And with whatever time remains, God in this passage, we want to not only look at God wants us to look up and discover intimacy within him, but God wants us to look in. And if you uh, have that insert there in your bulletin, if you don't remember nothing else, uh, that insert says, this is what we want to share, 
The closer we get to God, my friends, the more not only last week sensing we become of the presence of God, but the closer we get to God, the more sensitive we become to our, and if there's one word I want you to circle, to our own sin. I said our own sin. Because you know what, when, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we can easily be aware of everybody else's sin. Is that not right? Oh, my goodness gracious, I, I, I can tell you what's wrong in your life, and you can definitely tell me what's wrong in my life. But I, the, the message today is, my friends, when you and I have really seen the Lord, when you and I have, have really experienced God, when you and I have drawn closer to God, uh, we have to ultimately pray that prayer. Uh, it's not my brother, yeah. but it's not, it's not my sister, but guess what? It's what? Me, oh Lord. And uh, first of all, when it comes to looking in, when life caves in, there must be what I want to call a time of conviction. Would you uh, write or put in your mind a time of conviction? Because when we draw near to God, guess what we will see? We will clearly see our own sin. We will clearly see our own shortcomings. Because if you look back in chapter 6, uh, it says here in verse 4, And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. Uh, 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 Minister Pilate, when he was mentioning about the book of Job, he said Job is one of them books, and we uh, hopefully we'll get back to it when maybe smoke is coming out your ears or whatever. I'm not sure. So you said something like that. Well, I want you to know there is some smoke stuff that does start smoking, all right? Anytime we hang out with God, the holiness of God caused smoke to fill the house, but God started doing some other cooking and some other barbecuing, as it were. And it look at verse 4, verse 5 said, so I said, after he had seen God like he'd never seen God before, look what happens in verse 5. The uh, Isaiah said, is what? Whoa, what is what? Me. For what I am what undone because what I am a man of unclean lips and what I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And then he goes on to say the only way that I realize now that I'm a man of unclean lips and I'm a man who's undone. At the end of verse 5 it says, for what? For my what? Eyes have what? Seen the king, the not no longer looking at King Uzziah, but oh my goodness gracious, I have come face to face with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And in the midst of seeing the King of kings and the Lord of lords, I realize I'm the one who is in need of the prayer of God and the grace of God. Isaiah like often we do, we've been looking at all of Uzziah's faults, and Uzziah had to pay dearly for his own mistakes and sins. But my friends, if we're going to walk close with God, did you know the closer we get to God, guess what? The more sensitive and the more aware Guess what? We become of our own stuff, as it were. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still have your Bibles open? Yeah. What's interesting to me, yeah. if you look, at, uh, to look over to ch chapter 5, guess what? Uh, Isaiah had been going around chapter 5, uh, uh, verse 8. Yeah. He'd been talking about woe to everybody else. Look at chapter 5, verse 8. He says, what woe to those who join house to house. Yes. Uh, they add field to field until uh, there is uh, no place. Uh, look to verse 11. 
Woe what to those who rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink. Verse 18. Chapter 5, woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and what and sin as if it's a cart rope. Uh, verse 20, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, and who put darkness for light. Uh, verse 21, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. Again, he's back to going after folks who drink. Uh, uh, woe to, the, uh, to, to men mighty at drinking wine. And woe to men of valiant for mixing intoxicating drinks. And I just want you to see, guess what? In chapter 5, uh, Isaiah been going around talking about woe is you for this. And woe is you for that. 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 But as soon as he saw God, as God is, he had to say woe is me. He had been going after everybody else about their sin and their shortcomings, but all of a sudden he had to deal with what was going on in his own life. I understand uh, in Isaiah chapter 6, this word, this phrase, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I am thought one commentator believes that this phrase, a man of unclean lips, it actually means referring to a foul mouth person. And possibly Isaiah had a problem in his life, even though he was saved, even though he was sanctified, even though he was filled with the Holy Ghost. It is possible, it is possible uh, the stronghold in his life had to do with his lips of all things. And it's possible that profanity was his shortcoming. And he was uh, one of them, uh, one of those uh, church leaders that will uh, lay aside his legend in a moment and tell you off in no time flat. He was going after those who had the problem of intoxication, but he would not deal with his own mouth. And I still want to say, you know what? We have this tendency, bless our hearts, especially in our so-called holiness culture. And I'm saying so-called because this is biblical holiness here, okay, in the word of God. And biblical holiness does not become selective and I look at Minister Pollard's stuff and not look at my own stuff. A biblical holiness says is that I allow then being in the presence of God to look at me and look at the strongholds in my life. I have no idea what the stronghold and besetting sin in your life may be, but allow me to hasten to say that, my friends, if our drawing near to God and experiencing the intimacy with God during this season is not creating any kind of convicting from God, Listen, can I be so bold as to say it's doubtful that we have really seen God, okay? I say it's none of my business whether you've seen God or not, but I want to say it's doubtful, all right? I want to say it's doubtful. Matter of fact, the reason why I say that, don't you know, it, you know what the Lord has been showing me, uh, don't you know that it's been God's pattern throughout the Bible that any time he shows up, and we talk about God showed up and he showed out. Uh -huh. Well, guess what God's pattern is? Anytime he really shows up in our lives and he shows out, well, guess what he has a tendency to do? Uh -huh. To show and shine on my stuff and your stuff. Yeah. Well, if you don't believe me, now keep your place. Keep your place there in Isaiah uh, uh, chapter 6. We'll come back to it. But would you put it in reverse? Go back to Job. Yep. Go back to the book of Job, uh, chapter 42. Uh-huh. Job chapter 42. Now, keep in mind, since you know the book of Job, you, you, you know the background. You're talking about grieving, yeah. talking about death, uh -huh. talking about losses in someone's life. Job, real quickly, in the midst of it, he lost 
15 children, not one. Some of you parents already know it's horrible to lose one child. Lost 10 children, lost his health, lost his wealth, lost his job, lost his respect, uh, lost everything. And the Bible says that uh, Job understandably got to the point and said, where is God? And guess what God did between Job chapter 1 and, and Job uh, chapter 40? The Bible says that, that, that God, just said, you know, uh, 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 earlier in, in this book, Job was his pain, oh my goodness gracious, his hurt had gotten so bad, thinking about uh, his 10 children was gone, thinking about all of his losses. And the Bible says that he said, Lord, where are you? I, I wish I could find you. I look behind me, I can't find you. I look on the side of me, I can't find you. I look in the front of me, I can't find you. I look in the back of me, I can't. Lord, where in the world are you? Well, the Bible says God took Job up. And God appeared to Job in a very awesome, a very manifesting way. And, and uh, the background of chapter 42 of, is this, that after God got through not only appearing to Job, uh -huh. yes. the Bible says, after Job got through having his seeing God like he'd never seen God before, mm. chapter 42, verse 3, verse 5 says, Lord, mm. Lord, I've heard of you in the past mm. yeah. by the hearing of the eye, ear, but Lord, watch this now, but what? Now I have what? Seen you. Ah, he's seen the Lord like he'd never seen the Lord before. But look what he says in verse 6. Therefore, in light of the fact I see you like I've never seen you before, in light of the fact that you decided to draw near to me as I was yeah. seeking you, in light of the fact that uh, while, uh, the, while we were being called to seek your faith for 21 days, Lord, I've seen seen you, but look what the aftermath was. He says, therefore I do what? I abhor what? Myself, and I do what? I repent in dust and ashes. I just want you to see, time will not allow us. There are other times God showed up in people's lives, but it always led to a time of self-revelation, and I just want to remind us that when we see God like we've never seen him before, rather than seeing everybody else's stuff, and everybody else is seeing what it does, it creates a sensitivity to sin in our own lives. Yes. This is someone's testimony, so will you allow me to move from the broad to even more specific? This is what one person said. One person says this, they say it that spiritually sensitive people are also seeing sensitive people. Right. And I'm going to say, not seeing sensitive everybody else, but in their own life. He says, I used to wonder why the first people to respond to an altar call were the people most devoted to the Lord, but then I began to realize something about myself. During seasons in my life when I had become preoccupied with other things and drawn back from the Lord, I had a high toleration, watch this, for my own sin <laughs> and environment of sin. But during those seasons when I was drawn near to the Lord, I would find myself asking, watch this now, for forgiveness for minor infractions. See, when we done drifted from the Lord, so-called big sins, uh, uh, you know, oh, those are big sins. I didn't do the big sins, but something about when, when, when the closer I get to the Lord, guess what? 
all of a sudden big sin. Now I'm, I'm, God is on my stuff about minor sin. And he goes on to say, forgiveness for minor infractions. I would rush into the best parking place and suddenly realize how selfish that was. A slip of the tongue would immediately rise or result in conviction and repentance. Getting ticketed at some, oh no, getting ticked off at somebody who cut me off in traffic was not acceptable anymore. I know y'all don't get ticked off when somebody cuts you off. I'm saying what somebody else takes the perspective. He says, do you know what I mean? He says, here in Isaiah is the manifest presence of the Lord and with his increased awareness and God's presence came and increased awareness of sin in his own life. Oh, that God would increase our awareness of who he is in order that we may become aware of, of not only who we are, but what God wants to dress in our own life. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. uh, it's, uh, you know, those of us who travel, uh, every now and then, uh, and you know, got to do this TSA stuff, and and uh, uh, and you, you got to go through what the they, they they've got the full screen that goes around you and shows all your stuff and all this other stuff, and then you 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 got the one you can just get to walk through, and Lord knows I always be trying to do my best to go through the one that I don't have to, you know, strip down to my underwear. At least I feel that way and feel violated, as it were. But uh, there, 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 there was one time, I, I, you know, sometimes I would go through and, and I could just leave my billfold in my, uh, or my wallet, okay, in my, I, I, I haven't forgotten, I haven't forgotten that there are no longer billfolds anymore. But I could, uh, most times I could just leave it in my pocket. But one time I went through and, and, and the buzzer went, off and I was surprised and I turned around and I said to the person, well, I've gone through this thing several times and it's never created a problem. This is what the person said to me. The person said, well, today the sensitivity is up higher than it normally is and it is detecting today that which wasn't previously detected. Well, I want to tell you when we draw near to God there is a sensitivity Activity, not a hypocrisy, not again, I hope you see this is not this focusing on other folks stuff, but we begin to focus on our own stuff and sometimes language that used to be acceptable, I'm no longer, it's no longer acceptable. Stuff I used to watch when my sensitivity was low, I'm kind of uncomfortable watching now. Things I used to find entertaining when my sensitivity sensitivity is low, uh, it is now causes a dis-ease in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And overall, I want you, if you don't remember anything else, the closer we get to God, the more we see ourselves yes. and our own shortcoming. Yes. Well, friends, what do you do? What are we supposed to do yes. when God seemingly has undressed, has exposed, has begun to show us some areas in our lives like never before? Well, we got one choice or the other. We can be in denial and tell God and the Holy Spirit you tripping God. Or we can do what Isaiah did. Isaiah did not play the God you tripping. But Isaiah, we got to move from conviction when the Holy Spirit puts his finger on it, and we got one or two choice. We can be in denial or we can go into confession, and confession simply says, Lord, you are right, and I am wrong. And friends, we got, usually when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you have about a second, and I'm going to really say about a half a second, okay? 
to make up your mind whether or not you're going to respond to and be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit seems to be pointing out. Again, can uh, 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 Isaiah, uh, when we go back to the book of Isaiah, but anyway, you're there, Job, stay there, Job. Guess what? As soon as God showed Job yes. his own stuff, yes. immediately said, Lord, yes. I abhor myself as yes. righteous and self-righteous as I am. Lord, I want you to know my behavior, my attitude is, is ab abhorrent. Uh -huh. Isaiah said, Lord, I am. He didn't say, Lord, were the people at the church made me that way? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> he didn't say, uh, my, uh, uh, Isaiah shouldn't have uh, goofed up like he did. Yeah. He said, Lord, I am unclean. I am a man of unclean lips, and we have to be willing to agree with God. The word confession, if I can remind you, it is a legal term. The picture of a courtroom, the judge has issued the findings and the sentence, and it's simply you and I saying, Lord, you are right, and I'm wrong. And the reason why this is significant when it comes to the issue of confession, friends, we're dealing with a holy God, okay? Yeah. I said we're dealing with a holy God. Yeah. And when we're dealing with a holy God, we have one or two choices. As uh, uh, James White says, he says we have a choice to make when we come into the presence of God and he points out our sin. Either we can justify ourselves or we can justify God. But we cannot do both. If I am right, then God is wrong. I said, if I'm going to tell God that I'm right, then I am wrong. But it's better for me to realize I'm wrong and God is right. Because I want to let you know, now think about it, how many relationships you can have, you can just walk up to somebody and tell them you lied, you always been lying, and you lied to me about me, and y'all still bosom buddies. Come on now, it don't work that way. Come on, is that right? Even at home in marriage relationship. You tell your spouse, he or she's a liar, you always been a liar. See how cold the rest of the house is that day. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone. Y'all can't handle that. But guess what? Uh -huh. If you and I can't get in the face of somebody and tell them you're a lie and you've always been a lie and everything's okay, how much more do you think we can tell God? God, you're lying and you know you lying. I'm right and you wrong. I declare the Bible is true. We need to let God be true. And the Bible says, and all men are liar, and over all, confession says, Lord, you are telling the truth about my situation. Well, look what God did, and I'm going to start trying to wrap it up. If we all allow the conviction of God to speak to us, yeah. and then rather than denying, we'll confess to God you are right.